let, so the first trend we want to talk about, and we have all of this in slides, it's basically um, the uh, adoption of integration-friendly IoT standards and protocols. And um, ju just because I see it in the chat, so uh, what we saw last year is that Google shut down, GCP shut down its IoT, basically in this year, in August, they will discontinue it. And other vendors like SAP also announced it. Microsoft Azure has not announced any kind of discontinuation of their offerings. Um, this is interesting though, because now we, we what is really something we see a lot in the market. And what you see here on the slide is uh, part of a survey we did with IIoT World. And this is a, uh, IIoT World is, is basically is a, is a company really focusing on the industrial IoT side of things. So um, more, many, many people here in this audience who are uh, dealing with industrial IoT will very likely know IoT world. And we did a survey with them. And in the survey, we asked which of the following data movement tools do you consider essentially to fulfill your industrial IoT strategy? And uh, it's, it was extremely interesting to see that more than 50% of all companies, and as a reminder here, we had, um, I think, more than 130 people. Uh, most of them being executives in their businesses, um, or many of them, and also lead architects answering here in this survey. Uh, they consider MQTT as one of the key strategic technologies in here. Um, what was honestly even to us surprising to see the extent of what MQTT spark plug um, as a technology, how strategic it was for many um, of these companies, that every fourth company had MQTT spark plug on their agenda. So what this really means is if you're in the, in the IIoT space, if you're doing industrial and you don't have MQTT spark plug currently on your radar, um, 2022 might be the perfect time to be really ahead of the curve and really unlock some of the benefits um, other companies are already um, un unlocking. Um, and what is interesting that even OPC UA, especially in Europe is, is very, very dominant, but of, of course also in uh, North America, um, only a bit more than 30% considered it really essential um, here. So um, the thing is, so a quick quick refresher for people who are very new to MQTT and so on. So MQTT is basically a technology uh, that is lightweight, efficient, and supports bi-directional messaging from cloud to devices. And um, so it started in 1999, basically for monitoring oil pipelines. Uh, with Philips 66 back then, but in 2010, around that, it really um, received a, a renaissance, if you will, because it was discovered that all the problems with machine-to-machine -machine communications um, are properly addressed by the communication protocol. And um, so while it's very technical, still this is considered for many companies very strategic to have a proper data movement strategy based on MQDT. And we will see today that connected cars. Uh, so for some year at HiveMQ, we, and I personally also have a bit of a background in automotive. And uh, so because every German car manufacturer works with us um, as well as most of North American and, and uh, many in, in Asia. And we're, HiveMQ is basically connecting most of the connected cars or many of the connected cars worldwide. Um, with with these technologies, so this is a, MQTT is a technology uh, where, like you, literally you you connect tens of millions of of cars, for example, um, in the field and bring it basically to the backend to the cloud. Uh, but also, it's used heavily in industrial IoT, where you usually don't have millions of devices um, uh, in a factory. This is I, I have not seen it. Usually, you're having um, a lot of assets, but usually more uh, in the, the hundreds or, or sometimes thousands. And MQT is really also designed for connecting that. And this is in a, and you get this kind of, of almost real-time communication, this snappy communication all across the globe. There you have this, what, what we call push-push communication. Um, also over unreliable networks. And what is so interesting, why, why are we even talking about MQDT? Because MQDT is a foundational technology where other, um, let's say, technologies like Sparkplug um, sit, sits basically, uh, Sparkplug sits on top of MQTT, similar to um, many, let's say, uh, 
uh, other protocols sit on top of HTTP, like uh, for example, REST sits on top of HTTP. Spark plug sits on top of MQTT. And Spark plug is enables what what people call a unified namespace. So um, for the folks in the industrial IoT um, space here, what you usually have is if you look into a factory, you have this kind of spaghetti architecture where you have point-to-point -point connections from assets, devices, um, applications, um, like scalar systems, um, manufacturing execution systems, and so on. And you have this point-to-point -point integrations. This makes it very hard to maintain and it makes it very hard to scale and it makes it, this is the key problem, very hard to unlock value for the business because you have data sitting everywhere and you don't have the access. And very often this access is required um, on the IT side of things and not on the operations technology side of things. So what we see as a key trend is that many customers um, and users are now gravitating towards the so-called unified namespace uh, solution. What this basically means is you have a kind of a data space where you have like really everything you ever wanted to know about a factory, about the manufacturing processes and so on. And, um, and this unified namespace gives you access to that. And we have, and this is so interesting. I was visiting a, 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 a customer in Detroit a while ago, and they told me um, uh, that that unified namespace for them also means they push in things, even like shift plans, for example. They're planning to do that. So basically, having a, a access like a namespace, a live data streaming namespace where you get all of the data you want for the business and unlock value here. And we will talk about some other trends that really enable almost this kind of central nervous system for your business, really from edge to cloud and everything in between. So for the folks who haven't heard about UNS, who will find it interesting, um, there's, there, we have a guide also, what we call a unified um, namespace essentials guide, um, which is available for free um, on our web, website. So, um, so the team is very happy to share the link also with that. So people um, can get access and learn more about it, what it means and what kind of value can be can be unlocked here. But the key message here is really, if especially folks in the industrial IoT space, uh, if Spark plug and unified namespace is not on your agenda, this is something um, I personally would really um, make make sure this is on the radar to make a proper decision and be ahead of the curve. Uh, because it's, it's really a, really crazy what companies are doing out there and what kind of efficiency gain they unlock and also what kind of real-time insights into the business they unlock by this, this almost radical new approach of, uh, of basically building your data structures or data infrastructures. So um, one of the things I, I already mentioned, so we have also some case studies online. One of them is, for example, with um, um, automotive manufacturing. Um, and um, and yes, and, and one of them is, is basically with Daimler. We're working with them since now many years, and and they they have a similar approach for the uh, vehicle diagnostic systems. Uh, again, this is also on the website available if people want to check out the, the whole use case um, and what what this company is doing, connecting the factories. Uh, feel free to dig into all of the details. <clears throat> 